At this point, if you ain't doing content right, what are you doing? If you're not doing content, what are you really doing? Because how, how you, you expect to make sales there? if you ain't creating no content? Even in brand awareness. Mm -hmm. What should people be doing with their content right now to make 2025 a good content year? Study the type of page you want. I study the type of personal brand other people have. Figure out what platform do you want to master because every platform has a different type of algorithm. What makes me think content is trash is the quality. But then I was like, well, that's not really true. I don't even think quality quality of content matters if it's something that like people can follow along with if i'm seeing these things get thousands of likes and then this stuff only gets a little bit of likes then it's like okay they're showing me what they want let me keep doing this i see a lot of people when i go on their page they just like leave the comments don't respond to any of the people that's showing them love be intentional about the story that you're telling and the people that you're engaging with people get stuck thinking that they need to create something new every single time with content and sometimes you don't if it worked that means it can work again and it'll continue to bring new audiences to your platform because people will share that. Hey, what's good, y'all? Welcome to Growing Pains Podcast, where we talk about business in the life of a young adult. I'm Trevion. I'm Yanni. Hey, y'all. I'm Jada. And today we're going to be talking about some content creation. You know what I'm saying? Getting in your content bag. Exactly. Let's get it. We're going into 2025. At this point, if you ain't doing content right, what are you doing? If you're not doing content, what are you really doing? Because how, how you, you expect to make sales if you ain't creating no content? Even in brand awareness. If you still making trash content in 2025, it's like... Bro, oh I'm telling you right now, I seen your content and it's literally trash. It's like, trash. You need help Yo, with your content. I'm telling you, I seen it come up and I did this. <laughs> Didn't even. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yo. <laughs> what yeah, were you about to say? What do y'all think? Okay, why do y'all think people be making trash content? Like, what even makes it trash? I think ignorance, like not knowing how to. Yeah. I also but think. But what, what type of content make y'all think this content sucks? Posting unnecessary question. stuff like. You're showing me that you're at a party on a Saturday. Yeah, I feel like lack. I, don't care about that. I, I feel like lack of consistency in content makes content bad. Like you mm. say, you do this, and I follow you for this specific reason, but now you're posting about stuff I just that just don't align with the original thing I followed you for. Yeah, I feel like that's what makes content bad. Which is what I mean by like posting a, a party or something, because like. Okay, you post the party, but what's the intent behind yeah, it? You know like what I'm saying? You like, why are you posting this? I get but it. I posting feel like on some, your... if it's a part of your brand, I think it's cool. That's what I'm if saying. It's oh, if it's a okay, part of yeah. your brand, that makes sense. But if you're just posting it just to post it, it's like, do you really just expect this stuff. to like work? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, e even if you were to do something creative at the party, you know what I'm saying? Like, maybe like you got, um, let's say you're having a party, mm -hmm. for example. Let's say you're having a party, and you say like, um, how how this party be. And how like other parties yeah. be, you know what exactly. I'm saying? Like that's some um, to make content out of. It's yeah, intention. lack of I feel like lack of in intentionality and in content shows. Like, yeah, it's like okay, I could tell you just posted this yeah. just to post something. Yeah, for sure. And I feel like trash content typically has like no theme or no like storyline. Mm -hmm. So I could see y'all ever see the little fat kids and or big kids, mm -hmm. and it's like <laughs> <laughs> you just expose yourself again. <laughs> I did not expose <laughs> Y'all, the way Jada be explaining people, dog, it just be I like, how did she be like, I'd be like the person with the bald head. She'd be like, y'all ever seen the one kid with no toe? <laughs> okay, if they got no... If it's they, like, why do you got to explain them like that? Because you going to know exactly who I'm talking about. Get to the point. You going to know exactly who I'm talking about if I say the kid with no toe. <laughs> Jada be like, the kid with the big head... Bruh. It, it's not even like I say mean stuff. I say stuff that's obvious. Sometimes it be mean, bruh. No. Now, y'all talking about babies. But people... Bruh, you be talking about babies. She no, do. I don't. I think <laughs> all babies are cute. I just think they look <laughs> like cartoon characters. And you, when I call... <laughs> <laughs> I call a baby a cartoon character that you think is ugly, then it's a problem. But if I think the cartoon it's character is cute, ugly, bruh. no, and we're not even about to get into this. <laughs> Anyways, get to the point. We're exactly. on content. Stay on topic. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? So you see the little big kids, and they <laughs> basically are saying how they want to lose weight. And like so little cereal? Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Bruh, he did lose weight. Ooh. 
kill him. That wasn't oh, a joke. I was about to say, did he? Yeah, he lost oh, weight. I was going to say, did he pass? But I'm thinking of another black kid. <laughs> it was another little black kid. I know who you're talking about. The one you're talking about, the one that was like, what we, what we about to eat today, right? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Like, I knew a little today? black kid. But Lil Terrell did lose weight, though. He be working out for real. Yeah. You would talk to him? That's <laughs> not the <laughs> point. It was a joke. It was a joke. Go was a joke. to the, <laughs> the point. <laughs> It was a joke. <laughs> <laughs> That's a baby. <laughs> y'all like the same age, y'all need anyways. That man is bro, like... Bro, he like 16. Exactly. Oh, he's oh. not. He is, bro. Anyways, that boy's like 20 years old. Get to the point of content. I'm trying to. Bro. <laughs> anyways, when you see the little kids who are overweight and they want to lose <laughs> and they want to lose weight or seeing the little kids like this is one one boy i keep seeing who he's like really underweight and he's 14 and he's like just sticks and bones and it'll be like <laughs> see that's what we talk <laughs> what, what am i saying time. wrong <laughs> what am i saying wrong we got him skinny bro like we understand he was skinny, but you got to say, oh, he was sticks and bones. He didn't have nothing. Anyway, get to the point. I don't even see what's wrong with me saying that. It's just the way you address things. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, I follow those kids, and it's, I follow their content. The content is recorded terribly, but... It's cool because it's a storyline, so I'm watching their journey. So, because at first, one thing I was going to say was what keeps, what makes me think content is trash is the quality. But then I was like, well, that's not really true. I don't even think quality of content matters if it's something that, like, people can follow along with. So, I say, like, some type of theme, uh, not having a theme or not even, um, not having a, what's the other word? A storyline, I feel like that can make content trash. Like, I feel like you have a theme, you know? Like, Trey, you have a theme. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like Ellis Sewing Co., it's a theme, you know? So I feel like that is what makes content good. Yeah, I agree. That I, That's one thing that will literally make me not follow a person. Like, if I see a viral video or a viral post, mm -hmm. and I'm like, oh, this content is something I will follow for. I go on their page and there's nothing else they like only that. have one video. I literally yeah. don't yeah, follow same. them because it's like, you don't post this type of content, so it's no yeah. reason. That's why looking at the analytics is so important because if people, if this thing is blowing up, that's what people want to see. Yeah, exactly. for sure. Or even the thing that makes me unfollow <laughs> is if you started off with a theme and, and a, ni a niche and all of those things and you just stop posting. It's like, what am I following you for? That's true. Point? You know what I'm saying? If you're really trying to build some, you're going to keep posting. And so That's with true. that being said, it's like, that'd be the main thing for me is like, I'm not following nobody or I'm not going to buy into what, what it is that you're offering if you're not posting anything about it. And also in, cor like, in correlation to what you said, I guess this is just slightly different for me. Lack of consistency. I won't follow somebody if it's lack of cons consistency. So on YouTube, if I see like a really good video, but I see they post six months ago, one year ago, yeah. two years ago, I'm not following. It's like, what's post. the point? Like Exactly. <laughs> nah, I feel that. So based on that, what do y'all feel like well, I guess like five things in general that people should be doing better with their content to prepare for 2025. So these next three or last three months of the year, what should people be doing with their content right now to make 2025 a good content year? Real quick, real quick. If you're not subscribed to the channel, what are you doing? Tap in. Tap in, twin. Take a five second break and go subscribe exactly we got so much on our channel y'all we got vlogs we got challenges we got silent library we got everything so what are you doing like what are you doing? go subscribe right what now what are you doing <laughs> go, go subscribe stand on business. go stand on business go stand exactly. on business yeah let's get back into the episode <laughs> one thing i'll say is this is and this is something that i promise y'all has helped me okay so really tap in for real but the thing is to study the type of page you want like if you like, so, so find somebody in your niche that has like the aesthetic, the community, the type of post that you, how you want your page to be, study that. What types of audios do they use? Do they use specific fonts or do they not? Do they have um, low exposure on their co on their posts or do they not? Do they have long captions or do they not? How long are their videos? Do they storytell in their videos? Do they do POV videos? Do they do talking videos? Like literally, y'all, I studied the type of personal brand other people have, to, and, and I didn't duplicate, but I just changed it like one percent to match how I wanted my content to be. But if that, if yeah, that's one thing I would say. Study the type of page you want and just change it 1%. Yeah, yeah, for sure. What was the question again? 
Uh, well, basically, let's do six things. But yeah, we're all gonna say two things each of what people should be doing to prepare, um, or what people should be doing the rest of twenty twenty four to have a good content year for. 2025 so like what should they be doing for their content okay cool i say um definitely with your content be intentional on engaging with your audience because if you're trying to grow something like you're gonna have to engage with the people because that makes them keep coming back so i see a lot of people when i go on their page they just like leave the comments like just don't respond yeah. to any of the people that's showing them love um and check your analytics, like look at what's working for you. Like, for example, like one thing that works for me for GP um, is posting POVs. So I'll do a POV telling my story of my journey because that's pretty much what you're doing through your content is storytelling. So yeah. be intentional about the story that you're telling and the people that you're engaging with. Comment back to them. You know, one thing that I do in order to feel a real connection with people through social media is sending them voice notes instead of a text. So that way they can hear my tone. They can hear my energy throughout the conversation and things like that. So main thing, engage with your audience. That's good. That's good. Um, I would say another thing that you should do, like focus on for this year when it comes to content is really getting into scheduling and planning. I know Yanni has been doing that more. Mm -hmm. Um, even we've as even how we've been saying like, oh, we're planning, uh, like, oh, these specific days will go shoot content. So I feel like being intentional about when am I recording content and also something that I'm going to add because of, uh, what you've been doing, it's like a day to edit. Mm -hmm. I feel like. Uh, I had a set day to uh, record content like, okay, every Monday I'm going to record content, but I wasn't scheduling a time to edit it. So now I'm always behind on editing because it's like, oh, I don't have a set time to edit my content. So I will say really just scheduling when you want things to be posted. Uh, uh, Yanni does what certain types of content gets posted on certain days, but like scheduling all that out, I feel like you want to be as organized with your content as possible um, because this is, this should be a consistent thing that you're doing. You should be posting multiple times a week. Like I know on my sewing company page, I'm trying to post at least four to six times a week. Yanni posts three times a day. So it's just like, and Trey is starting to pick up posting multiple times a week, uh, mm -hmm. like three times a week, right yeah. on a uh, Royal, not Royalty Made It, Royal Travion yeah. page. And so it's just like, if you're going to be posting that consistently, you really have to plan and schedule things out in order to stay mm -hmm. ahead of schedule or just stay Ooh. on top of things in general. Y'all, when yeah, I tell y'all, sure. I just figured out how to make a content strategy and a content calendar. It's been literally so, so, so helpful because now I'm not just posting on the whim, like trying to stress myself out. Oh, what am I going to post? I have nothing to post today. Like, no, I have everything planned and now all i do got to do is just follow the formula follow the formula format of what i had already planned so i'm not falling behind or not posting on a day because i don't have no ideas everything's already planned out so that's that was a great great point jada yeah i feel like um next point is figure out what platform you want to post on when i first started when i first i'll say grew when i first learned how to grow an account I focused on TikTok specifically, my clothing brand TikTok account, Wise Label. I said, I'm going to stay on this TikTok page. And Instagram, I may post here and there, but my full focus is literally on TikTok. Even now, I'll post, still post on my main TikTok because I'm focused more on personal branding now. I'll still post on my TikTok on my personal page, but my main focus is on Instagram. So figure out where do you want to, what platform do you want to master? Because every platform has a different type of um, algorithm. Every content have different types of ways that your content may have to change depending on where you're posting it at. So do you want to post on TikTok? Do you want to post on Instagram? Do you want to post on Pinterest? Y'all be sleeping on Pinterest, bro. Pinterest is lit. Y'all, do you want to post on YouTube? Figure it out and then go all in. Make your plan, make your content strategy, your content calendar, and focus on that platform. Yeah, for sure. And the one thing that I'll say um, is definitely like repurposing content. So the reason why I say repurposing content is because you're able to now use something like people get stuck on thinking that they need to create something new every single time with content. And sometimes you don't. Um, so as I said, like about like the POVs and stuff like that, it's like with this being said, you can continue to do it in different ways. Maybe you could do a POV on yourself 
and then you do a POV on like friends or let's say prime example, you were doing public interviews for uh, Wise Label. So like a prime example to break that down because Yanu at a point in time was doing public interviews. When I was doing YouTube, it was a point in time I was doing a wave check and I had only did two, uh, par a part one and part two. And the reason where, like the way that I messed up is because I had went ahead and just only did those two where I could have switched it up. If I did a wave check in high school, maybe I could have did a wave check at the mall. Then I could have did a wave check in Miami, a wave <laughs> check in uh, a yep. conference meeting. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? You with the uh, the public interviews that you were doing for WISE, like you could do a, a public interview where you're asking questions on the belt line and then maybe you do like a public interview at church. Roller skater and, rink. Yeah, like roller skater yeah. rink. You could do all of those and just switch up the, the formatting of what it is that you're creating so that way people can gravitate to it. Because if it worked, that means it could work again and it'll continue to bring new audiences <coughs> to your platform because people will share that. You want to pay attention to the shares as well. What are people sharing? What are people not sharing or engaging with? So I like that because mm -hmm. I feel like that also makes it stay fresh in front of your audience. Yeah. Like people like consistency, but if you like, maybe it's like a different scenery, like you said. Yeah. I feel like that's like, oh, like this person really changing it up for real but it's still the same thing that i followed you for not nah, for sure yeah. like you really gotta like even um prime example like ddg he like milks his content he like do. the way he milks his content is like maybe he'll do a vlog maybe some out of that vlog may go viral now he gonna do a reaction you know what i'm saying and then on top of that he made now now he has a podcast he may talk on his podcast and do it that way then he gonna post it on tiktok you know what i'm saying like yeah. repurposing the content and milking <laughs> as much as you can out of your moment that's good yeah yeah i think that's good i would say the last thing um for me would be try as try as many things as possible like if your content isn't getting any motion right now these last three months of the year Try stuff out. Mm. I feel like that's been my method for Ellis Sewing Company. I've been trying out all different types of series. And each week, like, I probably try out two to three series a week. And it'll be, like, part one, part two, or all these different things. Like, mm. I'll post three different part ones of all just different series that I'm trying out. Mm. And I see, oh, th these two series did really good this week. I'll keep those going the next week. And then I'll add two other new series to try out. And so literally I have just been trying out everything that comes to mind and trying to create series out of that. And the things that works, that's the things I will continue to stick with. Like I'm learning my audience. I'm learning what they like. And so I feel like if you, like I said, if your content isn't getting any motion right now, this end of the year, just try stuff out until something sticks. I feel like it's no point in continuing to try things over and over and over and over and over again if you just feel like it's only like it's not bringing any growth you mm -hmm. know like like if you see no comments every time you post it or you don't even see like a little gradual increase or you know just anything Something. like that um like I was doing relatable like funny relatable like sewing content mm -hmm. um and it's like that did okay yeah. But when I saw, oh, well, when I just, when I do more, uh, like, educational or, like, mm -hmm. um, even, like, inspiring people with different designs you could try out, I saw, I saw oh, this does way bigger numbers yeah. than, like, me doing the relatable stuff. And not saying that I can't ever do the relatable POV content, but if I'm seeing these things get thousands of likes and then this stuff only gets like like a little bit of likes then it's like okay they're showing me what they want let me keep doing that so yeah. i would say try as much stuff what's up y'all real quick i know you guys are enjoying this episode but i just want to speak to all my christian streetwear brand owners so as you guys know and if you don't i have my own christian streetwear brand called wise label and in my journey of three years of owning this brand i have experienced a lot of ups and downs highs and lows i've experienced one of the cry scream and throw up i've experienced it all but the thing is i've been able to bounce back off of that and i know even you watching this video you may be at a point where you want to start your clothing brand where you want to grow it where you feel stuck where you know what i'm saying you feel like you want to 10x in it and i know exactly how you feel so i actually launched my first ebook in this ebook i put every single lesson every single hardship every single tip that i've got in this brain in this book it's filled with games and on top of that I am starting one-on-one -on -one mentorship and this is gonna be for my brand owners that feel like they want exclusive help with me for this it's only gonna be a few people
people before the ebook is open for everybody it's definitely going to be an, an investment you won't regret so if you're interested the link is in the bio now let's get back into this episode one thing that you said that just uh sparked a um a idea in my mind i know for the main thing i feel as though one thing that works in any field of like content is like teaching like teaching in your field you know what i'm saying like if you were to even that that one clip of you that went viral where you were just talking about like what it takes to have a clothing brand and sticking to one thing Mm -hmm. and then like even the things that we saw as far as like designers like designers are literally showing their photoshop and just showing the before and Mm -hmm. after process same thing with you jada like you taught people, uh, I forget the one post that you recently did, but showing people like how to uh, do a specific. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a specific showing technique. Oh, yeah, yeah the showing books, the book. those have done yeah. well. For sure. So when you teach somebody something in your field, that lets them know like, oh, this is an expert. And they want to share that to other people in their field, other other friends and their peers and stuff that also are a part of the same thing, you know. So I feel as though across any po- any platform, any uh, niche or field that as long as you're teaching, like that content is definitely possible to go viral. And it, it lasts shows, long too. Yeah, it lasts yeah. long. And it shows people you know what you're talking about. Exactly. Yeah, for sure. Just saying anything. You're not just trying to inspire people, just <laughs> trying to sell an ebook. No, you actually know what you're talking about. Nah, for sure. Nah, That's definitely. Good. Yes. So we're talking about content because, you know, we got something really big coming up. Big one. Yo. Yes. Yes. Big yes. So. Boy. We went to David's, um, what was the event called? Uh, Clarity and Content. Yeah, Yeah, Clarity Clarity and Content. And And through something that was kind of supposed to be like a fun little, I guess, assignment or project Mm -hmm. that we were given at the event, um, we ended up coming up with a really dope idea. And we realized, bro, when it come to content like we really know our thing yeah, like low sure. key like low key, high key. Know, really high key, yeah. high key. Like, really we just gave somebody key. some game recently definitely definitely and so when it comes to content i feel like we are really good at what we do yes. we all have like expertise and just like doing different things in content growing content and so we were like bruh we should take this project and make it a real thing and so we decided that we wanted to do like this content creation mentorship Mm -hmm. and i think it's gonna be really cool honestly i know it's gonna be really cool yeah like even we just did um a call with i guess like a case study that we're working with and even just seeing how well that conversation went, yep. uh, even our brainstorming call that we did for that client before getting uh, on the phone with them, like seeing how our ideas, like how we work together, how we come up with strategy for other people's businesses and brands. I feel like we could take that and apply it to so many other people. Mm-hmm. Um, I think a lot of people have great products, but they lack the brand awareness, right? Mm-hmm. Um, or they may have a great product, and they may have a lot of followers, but they lack community or they could have great product, but they don't know how to like make sales from or yeah, they have a great. Yeah, they have a great product, but they don't know what they should be posting to actually make sales off of that content. And so I feel like that's things that we've all learned how to do. And I feel like now I'm bringing that together to like give to people, bringing that together to uh, provide to like our audience um and just anybody who may be interested i feel like it's going to be really dope and we're going to be able to help a lot of entrepreneurs for sure for sure so with that being said definitely i'm sure y'all are interested because people ask us about content all the time so Mm -hmm. i feel as though with that like you could definitely get a part of this mentorship get some game and we will be focusing on like what can you do in order to grow your Mm -hmm. platform and grow increase the engagement on your content so be on the lookout for that. All of the details will be in the description. Pause. And You're forgetting something. What? Before we even get to the mentorship, we got a free workshop. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. We do, we do, we do. See, free you, you trying to fast forward. Okay? For the free <laughs> Exactly. So, the mentorship will be paid. But before we even get to that, we do have a free workshop. So, I definitely recommend you coming. I recommend you attending. And because it's online. Yes, it's virtual. And we are going to be giving a lot of game. We're going to be bringing in some people to come mm-hmm. speak to y'all. And we're also going to be speaking to y'all during this workshop. But it's just like, it's 2024. You shouldn't be, like, still, like, just struggling with figuring out your content strategy right now. Like, you should. Yeah, for sure. It's so much information out there. You should know how to create a content strategy for your brand. And so, that's what we want to help you with. So, y'all got to I come, do. bruh. Y'all and also, sure. something I'm noticing is a lot of platforms are really 
giving other creators a chance. Like, I don't know if it's, yeah, if it's just y'all, but I be seeing stuff on my timeline. Like, literally, it'll be, like, three likes. It'll be people with low, like, engagement, but they're starting to push them right now. Mm -hmm. So it's, like, a, a wave happening right now where they're trying to give us a chance, yep. a small yeah, creators sure. a chance to get in on a wave. But you can't get in on a wave if you don't know how to. Exactly. And the for only sure. way you gonna know how to is by getting in the free workshop. Period. Okay? Yeah, for sure. So with that being said, as we know, we know your content is trash. We are going to help you with that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So look forward for that. As you said, free webinar. Yes, free workshop. And we will put the details below. Um, if you are watching this episode and you do, or if you're watching this clip on Instagram and you do want to be a part of it, really comment workshop on Instagram. Yeah. And then if you're on YouTube, you'll have to go to Instagram to get the details. Uh, or I was going to leave what we information? We can leave it in the description. Okay, yeah. yeah we'll leave it in the description. But yeah, it's time to turn your content it's up, It's time to man. turn it up for real. For sure. Absolutely. And we just learned something with that real quick. What you just saying, uh, a goal like from YouTube to Instagram, that's another thing with content. Try to get people's attention on, on the platform that you are already on the best way possible. Like all the clicking links and stuff like that, like you got to get people's attention quick. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Right where mm -hmm. they are. So yep. that is something to learn and we are excited to release this and we will be... You know, Definitely. announcing all the details. Honestly, soon. I feel like we could really keep going with the tips, but it's like, we got to Yeah, we got to sit it down. You know what I'm saying? So that is the end. Let them know where they can find Growing Pains. Yes. Y'all can follow us on Instagram, Growing Pains Pod. Make sure y'all are streaming audio. And if you're streaming audio, come to the visuals because the visuals Yo. is lit. Period. Hey. You know what I'm saying? Y'all can follow me, Yanni Bratcher, in my clothing brand Wise Label. And I have a, I have an ebook on if you want to start a clothing brand. So y'all can tap in with that if y'all want to. Yeah, for sure. And you could follow me at Roy Travion and my creative agency, Roy T Made It. Let's get it. And y'all can follow my personal Instagram at I am Jada Ellis and my couture fashion brand at Jail Official. Yeah. For sure. And we out, y'all. Let's get it. <laughs>